Welcome back to Greenwich Valley for episode 14 with me, Mr. Sealy P. It's morning here on Greenwich Valley and I'm heading back to Mesh Pellets. Um, we couldn't get them sold overnight, obviously, the, everything was closed. It's now 20 past 7 in the morning. Uh, I'm coming to collect the full load. Now, thank you to everybody who commented. I think Barris was the first one that got in there with it, but loads of people commented uh, to say that um, the prices for straw and hay pellets are the wrong way round, apparently. That's what it says. Now, whether that's for all of them or not, I don't, don't know. What I've also discovered is locally, there's been a bit of a boom in this. Um, I've been tipped the wink that there are a few other places that will buy uh, your pellets. Um, go with it. Um, so yeah, locally there's a few more places. Up at the uh, the Grains... Uh, Whitney Grain, I think it is. Um, is it Whitney Grain? We'll have a look. I think it is. Um, they've got a sell point, which will take it. Um, apparently over at the grain point we were before let's have a look on the old map shall we yeah Whitney grain up the top they've got a selling station up here um, over at Greenwich Mill they are now taking pellets as well uh, at the um, barn sell point they've got a silo where they take them because they take grass, hay and straw and stuff so they're taking hay pellets a lot of these companies are providing local farmers for bedding and feed and various different things like that so Greenwich Mill are taking them um, like I say, all over the place whoops, didn't stop that um, so we've got a few different places to choose from now which is going to be very handy now we have also got fields that need to be harvested uh, where are we? Field 78 needs to be done uh, our fields 32 and 33 are well overdue now they're really ready to harvest and field 15 is as well um, we are going to swap out the harvester I think I think um, so as far as selling goes what are we looking at for at the edge grain vault which is at the barn 1720 if they are around the wrong way 1720 um, we've got pallet sell points I think the one that says 1638 is the one closest to me but it is rising um, the selling station up at Whitney Grain are doing 1608 so we've got a bit of options now there's a, there's a bit more competition within the marketplace I think people have started to realise that the pallet thing it's a fairly new process I suppose on the grand scheme of things uh, within the farming kind of industry it's been about for a while but I think it's it's getting a little bit more traction now. So uh, what we're gonna do? Where should we take them to? I mean, the best price is the edge grain vault at the moment. Unfortunately, this isn't gonna be pretty. As you can see, we've got a lot of lag because of what we got in the back. So, and I don't know if it's actually gonna take them directly into the sell point, or whether we're gonna have to unload them, which could be something we're gonna need to do. We might well need to unload. Actually, I'll put the beacons on. Um, since we've got a long load, I need to make sure I don't hit fences, hedges. I apologise for the lag on this. It's awful. Now, I was told a little while ago that that's all to do with the processing speed of the PlayStation and that it needs to be cleaned and that it will run perfectly well once it's cleaned. My PlayStation is clean. And I'll be honest with you, my other PlayStation, I do have two, um, well my wife's got one. This does exactly the same thing on a brand new PlayStation. Um, whenever I've done um, potato pallets, whenever I've done loads of bales, anything where you stack things close together, it does this. You get this frame rate drop and this lag, everything slows down, it gets a little bit horrible. So uh, the money has dropped, we were at 330,000. Obviously overnight we got clobbered again for our um, loan interest. Um, so like I say, the more we can make, the more we can pay off the loan. The loan interest comes down. And at some point we are going to be clear and free of debt. So to avoid any more of this, because it's just awful, um, let's get out to the barn sale point. We'll get to the edge grain vault. We'll have a look and see how we go. I'm not looking behind me. I'm assuming the trailer's still behind me. It hasn't rolled over or anything horrible. Um, and let's get these sold then I'll come back reload the next lot 
and we'll go again. I'll be honest with you, I, I find the same as baling and stuff like that, doing the pallets in the previous episodes, or the pellets on pallets, or whichever way around, I found it incredibly therapeutic, very relaxing, just using that crane inside, lifting the, pe the bales on. Now, because I had so many bales, 107 of them, I brought them all down, unloaded them all, and then went from there. What you can do, if you've just got a trailer of them, just back the trailer in and unload the bales off the back of the trailer. Of course, there is always the option of doing the pelleting directly out in the field. But like I said, you need a high horsepower tractor for that, which we don't have. So um, the other thing I was going to say, did I mention in the last episode? Um, we're not paying mesh pellets for um, like off of our top line because what I found... Um, every hour that we'll be using their equipment and their facility, we were being charged per hour anyway um, under the... Oh, what's it get put down as? Um, it's like the ongoing... Not repair costs. Oh, my mind's gone blank what it's called. Hang on a second. No, I'm stopping the road and I shouldn't be. Well, it's taking a long time to stop. Property maintenance, that was the word. Yeah, property maintenance. I think one of the hours, I got charged 937, another one was just under 1,000. One of the hours where I think I was obviously moving a lot of stuff around and not using the crane or the pelletizer, um, I think it only charged me about four, 500. But yeah, I was being charged property maintenance per hour, which I hadn't encountered before. So uh, yeah, they've already had their money. <laughs> they've already been paid for the use of the facilities. I know. I think I got clobbered because when I did the straw pellets, I we arranged a deal where they got ten percent. So I got charged for the use of facilities and then ten percent on top as well. A bit naughty, isn't it? So anyway, talked enough again. Let's go over. So as you can see from the outside, the lag is terrible. It's far worse from the outside. I mean, to be fair, I've had it worse. I've done potato pallets and various different things before where it just the frame rate is terrible it's not great at the moment but and the further away you get from it all of a sudden it clears up and everything's like oh look it's lovely again um, I'm surprised I didn't notice that before when I came through nudge nudge wink wink but again it's that diversification you know if you find that there's a, a process or something that's out there in the industry where you can potentially make... make oh, seriously. I'm having a nightmare. Got caught up on the fence post. Came through wrong angle completely. Um, yeah, then, then you know, people are very quick to jump on things and, and, and quite rightly, you know, you need to be jolly on the spot. And if companies or farms or businesses out there are suddenly thinking, oh, well, hang on, this is an emerging business. This is something. We can we can make money on this. And it's that middleman thing. I'm supplying the stuff. They'll buy it off me, and they'll probably sell it on and make a nice, tidy profit. Um, do I take... I'm going to take the straps off. I'm hoping this works. Will it just take them straight off? Will my money go up? There we go. Oh, I'm going to lose them, I'm going to lose them, I'm going to lose them. Lost a couple. 104,000. I really thought I'd make more than that. Oh, maybe not though. When we sold the last... Hmm, did 18 before. I made about 30 grand on the straw. So 18 pallets. What did we have on there? We had double that, didn't we? No, we had 32, so we had 16 and 16, 8 on each row, 16, that's actually, that's not too bad, 100, that's, yeah, that's 50,000 for 16 pallets, because I had 32 on there, whereas before I did 18 pallets of straw, and only made 30 grand, so actually that isn't too bad at all, and I've got a load more to go and collect, so, we're up to 432,000, we did alright, that I'm going to need to shove in, and we'll get that sold. I knew I should have undone the straps, should have just left them on there. Anyway, as you'll notice, now that it's gone, no more frame rate drop. Look, it's all very lovely. So I'm going to whiz back, I'm going to load up, I'm going to come back, and we'll sell again. Assuming this is still the most expensive place, uh, or that's going to pay us the most. If not, we'll take them somewhere else, and then we'll get on with our harvest, because we've got loads to get done. Um, and then what I'll do is pay another big chunk off the loan. 
uh, I'm racking at the moment, we can take another 200 grand off easily. We'll see what we get for the next lot. If it takes us over another 100,000, maybe another 300 grand. Um, so doing these pallets has absolutely paid off. Can I just nudge that in and then let me... Oh no, that's not good. No, no, no. Come on, just nudge it. <laughs> no. Rethink. Maybe the farmer's got some forks or something. We can sort something out. Oh, actually, yeah, the sheep farm's just up there. Maybe we can whiz down. We've got a bucket and stuff on the tractor. We can sort that out. Back we go. Oh, I keep meaning to say, you know, when I've been driving on the road, I think it's the same with telehandlers. I'm pretty sure on the British, on UK roads, all-wheel steer is illegal. If I'm, I might be wrong. That's what I believe to be the case. Um, so, on my side panel, open it up. Um, R1, and then do select steering mode. If I press L3 now, I can put front-wheel steer only. And that will steer just like a regular tractor. So if we're on the road, I should have been doing that before. You don't get those, you know, when you're driving along, all of a sudden you touch the steering wheel and you suddenly get the whole thing. But, obviously it doesn't turn as tight, but it handles a bit more predictably. Uh, so if you suddenly turn, you're not going to go veering across the road. It just handles like a normal tractor. Again, you may be new to all this, you may not know that. So, you know. And I should have been doing it anyway, realistically. Don't need the beacons on that. Let's get back. Indicating. I don't do that very often.
So as you've seen, we didn't do too badly. We're up to 518,689.88. Uh, Stuart is over on field four with the other JCB spraying. We've taken on another fertilising contract. We're just picking up jobs around. Um, the JCB telehandler, this thing was brilliant. I really, really like this. Small, compact, fairly cheap to buy. Works really, really well. Um, very, very happy with this. Um, so I brought that back. That's been washed. Well, actually, that was washed overnight. Actually, oh, I can stick it in next to next to the baler. Actually, it could do with a bit of maintenance, couldn't it? Let's do that as well. Um, we're going to grab the harvester. We're going to take the harvester back to the main store. They've sold us. They're going to get as good a price as they can. Although we have been warned that the or locally, or just generally, but prices for harvesters at the moment are fairly low. People are not paying out a lot of money for them so we'll just see how that pans out oh there we go a bit of repair work on that oh two pounds it looked far worse than that on the actual work uh, hang on a minute will i just repair hmm? oh the pallet need to disconnect the pallet thing from the back this is the front lifter if i disconnect this now it goes onto a pallet there you go, lizard front lifter. That will attach to anything with a trailer hitch. Um, it's an amazing bit of kit. Very, very handy indeed. So that explains why this didn't repair. I thought £2, that's not very much. That's more like it. 98 quid's worth of bits and bobs. Filters, grease. The odd little thing here and there. A few nuts and bolts. Bit of welding. We're good to go. Right. Let's go and put this away. So, actually we're better off putting this on. Sure, will be done in a little while. I think what we'll do as well before we take the harvest out, we're going to pay off 300,000 off of the loan. No, wrong menu. This is the one we want. And we want this one here. So we'll be down to 640,000. Wow. Uh, so let's repay. Let's get this right down, shall we? done 300 grand paid off so we're now down to 218,000 that's okay we want to be hovering around the 200,000 pound mark just a little bit of walking around money you know just in case we're keeping the Crossoni header we can do a bit of work on that and convert that over now this is a really nice harvester and I like this now the other thing as well is this isn't my decision I'm helping the guys out Mick who owns the farm and his son Stuart both inherited from um, Mick's grandfather when he passed away Mick's grandfather, Mick's dad, Stuart's grandfather, um, George, when he passed away. And that's why I'm here, because they were in debt and they were, you know, Mick wanted to sell everything, Stuart wanted to keep going. Now, they said that this is going to go. I like it. I like it because it's compact. Um, it's just a really nice harvester. <laughs> um, but this is going to go back. The guide price on this brand new is about 228 grand. I don't think we're going to get anywhere near that. Um, but what they've decided to do, I suppose, again, it's kind of you know, helping out local business. I don't know, really. It's not really helping us out as a business. But um, there's a guy locally that imports and trades and deals in harvesters. Um, and he's got, as far as I can tell, I think it's a US spec one. Um, uh, yeah, John Deere, US spec John Deere. Um, that's what they're looking at. That's what they want to do. Um, like I said, it's not my call. I think we'll take this way in and take a right. Keeps us off the main road. We can stay down the middle here. If anything comes the other way, we'll just move over. Um, yeah, so that's what I've decided to do. Um, rightly or wrongly, it's their call. I'm, oh, I just work here. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, for any of you thinking it's a bit mad importing, why would you import from the US and vice versa and whatnot? But some people do, some people collect, some people whatever. I was watching one lonely farmer. Another one. <laughs> that was my wife sneezing in the background there. Um, yeah, one lonely farmer I've been watching for quite a long time now. And um, a while, it was a while ago now he and his wife came to the UK and they did a tour around the UK I think they did a little bit of Europe as well 
Um, and while he was on tour around the UK, there's a massive John Deere um, sales place, I, I suppose, dealership. Uh, I think it's in Scotland. Was that where he went in the end? Because he was looking at prices of John Deere's, and a lot of the John Deere's are produced in Germany now, I think. A lot of them. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Um, and he was looking at buying some new John Deere, John Deere's, Deere, for, um, for his farm. And it actually was we're going to work out cheaper for him to buy a John Deere in the UK, ship it to the US, than it was to buy one in the US. Um, take that as you will. You may disagree. That's exactly what he did, and he did it on his, you know, his channel. And then a few episodes later, when he was back in the US, they went down to the local, where, wherever the docks were, to collect them and, uh, and bring them back to the farm. So, yeah, people do import and export stuff. It's not unusual. Now, my intention is, when we've got the new harvester, to at least get the corn harvest done today. So we're going to lease a corn header to go with it. Um, problem is, once we've sold this, I'm not sure where we've got to go to get the other one. Um, Mick's going to let me know. Um, and then we'll head out. I'm, I'm going to have to walk, obviously, unless Stuart... I know Stuart's fertilising. Unless Mick comes out and picks me up and gives me a lift. I can always grab a taxi, I suppose. Um, wherever I've got to go and get it from. Because I just don't know. It's a bit clandestine. It's like, you know, doing a secret drop somewhere. I have to wait by the phone until someone lets me know and then I'll go. Anyway, how is everyone? Everyone right today? Hope so. Another weekend's been and gone. Weeks are flying by at the moment. Just over a week now. This will probably post... I'm probably posting this Tuesday. So it'll be exactly a week. Um, on the 16th of June, the new Cavernland and Vicon equipment pack DLC will be available. If you have a season pass, it will be free. If not, you have to pay for it. I know PC Mac, according to the website, is 14.99 euros. Um, what that's going to be on the PlayStation Store, I don't know. I mean, probably the same amount, I would imagine. Um... So yeah, that, that will be available on the 16th of June. Um, I'm going to be doing a fact sheet roundup on Friday. Um, because I do fact sheet Fridays, and that's the last Friday before the pack releases. So I'm going to do a roundup. I, I, a while back, when was it? When was it? FS19 was releasing. I was doing the fact sheet Fridays every Friday. Um, and I just thought it makes more sense now. I don't know why, it doesn't necessarily make any more sense. What I'm going to do anyway is gather them all up and on Friday do one fact sheet explaining all the stuff that's going to be coming out. Um, oh, there you go, contract on Field 4 finished. Stuart's it's done on Field 4, that's good. Um, and then we'll... Um, yeah, and then I'll do... When, the, when it comes out on Tuesday, we'll have a look at it and I'll do a couple of mod reviews on the various different equipment. There's a fair bit of stuff in the pack as well, actually. Um, so, anyway, uh, let's see what we're going to get for this. And like I said... Asking price at the moment for a new one is two twenty eight. Hundred and sixty eight seven eighty. Well, it's not too bad, I suppose. It doesn't need any repair. We're not going to make a huge amount of money out of this deal. Um, realistically, I think the new one we're going to be getting. I say new one. It's going to be around hundred and. 30, 140 grand, so yeah we might only make 20, 30 grand out of this whole deal um, that's what I mean, I don't know whether it's a good oh, it's too late now, it's gone um, whether it's a good idea or not, because I'm pretty sure the John Deere we're getting has got a smaller tank capacity as well, I don't know it's just like I say, it is what it is it's not my call to make, so I'm going to sit now and wait um, wait for the call from Mick, and then we'll go and pick up the new one Wherever that may be. Let's see if they've got a tea and coffee machine somewhere. I knew I should have got a taxi. <laughs> so, uh, right, instructions. Second exit, not to Bally Green, but out to Strayed. That does say Strayed. I think it's this one here. Should be facing the oncoming traffic, really. Next right, there's a little track. Takes me up to the farm. 
and then apparently it's in storage from there. So we'll check. It's all paid for. We got it for 132, I think it was. Uh, I just paid for it. So we've made a little bit of money out of the whole situation. What we're up to, 262. Uh, we've got paid for the contract on field four. Stuart's now moved over and he's doing field 115. That being said, Stuart is using the last of our liquid fertiliser. We have no liquid fertiliser left. That's it. Right, there's the farm. As far as I know, I'm just picking it up. I haven't got... It's all paid for. So I'll, I'll just go up. It's not technically theft, is it, if we own it? So we've got a no, uh, John Deere 9600. It's a slightly older one. As far as tank capacity goes, it's a little bit smaller. I think the, the New Holland was... 11.5, wasn't it? This one's 10.8, so not a huge amount of difference in all honesty. We can live with that. Oh, I've been up here before. So I'll show you where we are on the map. Um, we've come from the shop down the main road to the roundabout. Second exit up here. We're out here. Little farm we just passes there. So right out on the eastern part of the uh, the farming area. There it is. It's actually quite cool, isn't it? I suppose you could set your own little farm up out of here, can you? Just buy the plot of land. You've, got, you've already got a building. There's a workshop there as well. That's pretty cool. Right, my only concern now is... And it's weird, isn't it? It's an older harvester. A little bit cheaper. Mara top on it. 50th anniversary edition. But it seems bigger. I mean, it does seem a lot wider as well. So we need to take this back to the store now. And get a corn header, then go over to field 78, and we'll get some corn done. So I suppose, like I say, we have made a bit of money out of it. Once Stuart has finished on his spraying, we are going to be selling the sprayer. And we did only have the front tank leased. Um, because we're going to be going down a different route with regard to our fertilising from then on. So, now remember, please pay attention... I have my side panel plugged in. With my side panel, I can do this. That's not on my controller. Before the, all the <laughs> controversy starts, there's a difference between beacons and hazard lights. Beacons are R1 and up on the D-pad, although this doesn't have any beacons, so I can't actually show it. But beacons are R1 and up on the D-pad. Indicators, R1 and left on the D-pad. R1 and right on the D-pad. There is no function on the controller for hazard lights, but on the Satex side panel, there is. And we're going to need that on because this is a big old vehicle. And that's another one of those features that I love. I think it's absolutely brilliant. It just adds a little something when you are transporting stuff, when you're going different places, to be able to put hazard lights on, as well as beacons if you want to go down that route. But that's how I've got it to work. So, if you're watching this without the volume on, you won't hear me saying this anyway. Why? <laughs> What's the point? Um, I guarantee I'll still get comments of people asking, how did you do that? This is actually pretty tight down here. As we just... Whoa, what did we just hit? I'm assuming it's a brick wall or something. Good start on it. End up smashing up the mm. new old harvester. For those of you that have been asking for a bit more ring cab. Oh, I'm glad I stopped then. I think this has a longer pipe than the New Holland did. So I'm just thinking, to go back... Well, I assume we might as well just go back the way we came. It seems daft. Oh, this is wide. I'm going to have to pull over. The trials and tribulations of a harvester driver. Yeah, otherwise it means going right, then up and through the town a little bit, and then back out again. It does seem pointless. We might as well just go this way. This exit. 
back up to the store and grab a corn header. Now it's field 78. Uh, like I say, I've left the, the uh, JCB, our trial hours JCB is over there with our trailer. The corn is going to be going to Rob for the pigs. Then the field will be repurposed for the next crop. Ah! Whoa. I, it's, you know what? I knew as soon as I moved over a little bit that I was too close to that. Okay, so when we get up to the store, maybe a bit of repair work. <laughs> Yeah, the, the pigs need food. So what I'm now toying with is speaking to Rob to see whether we're going to be better off harvesting, like doing soybean again, doing a big soybean harvest again. Just repurposing, we'll go again with soybean. It really doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't have to be much of a diversification in crops. We're fine. Um, and then buying pig food. The, the problem is with pigs, and it always is and has been and will be, even with seasons on, you don't make a lot of money, if anything, on them. What it costs you in pig food or crops, you can sell the crops for more money than you actually make from the pigs. So it just becomes a kind of labour of love, really. And I think, again, that's one thing I think I'm learning and have learnt from watching a lot of the different YouTubers, farming YouTubers. Farming is not about making money. <laughs> it's, not, it's about, it's a passion. It's a love, it's a joy of the job. And I think for some people, as twee as it may sound, it's about providing food and products and stuff for people. A lot of farmers do it for kind of for very genuine reasons. There you go, contract on field 115 complete. I think that's about another 10 or 11 grand, that one. Can I turn around here? I'm going to catch the pipe. Nope, we're all right. It's quite tight getting in here. I love the gear stick moving on there. So... What I might do, I think, is try and stick the harvester in the way. Although it might say I can't un put anything out. Hopefully leave this in the way. And they've got no choice. But to put the header to one side, which will be easier to get to. So, we want a corn header. Uh, we're going for corn headers. I'm going to go for a capello. What's that one? That's a six. I think we might go for the nine. Make life a little bit easier, wouldn't it? Would it work on this though? Or do I just go for a John Deere and be safe? What's that one? That's a nine, but that doesn't fold. I want one that folds for going down the lanes. But we'll put it on. There we go. That would be right, wouldn't it? How much is that to lease? Oh, 3,462. It's just all expense, isn't it? I've only got one field to do with this as well. Oh well. It's what it is. It needs to be done. There we go. Oh, it still hasn't really put it... Somewhere easy to get to, is it? I'm going to hit the building. Oh man. Can I nudge that over a little bit, maybe? There we go, let's twist that a bit. Just use the wheels to turn it a bit. Does not like this corner. Let's nudge it a bit more. There we go. Oh, good visibility. And over to field 78 we go. Oh, it's tight. Just trying to think what the best way to go is, really. I don't know, there is a good way to go. <laughs> this is seriously tight. There we go.
Now, assuming Stuart is just checking over the machinery, he's probably still out in the field. We might see him as we go past. Field 115 is on the left. Oh, he will Let's pull over a bit into the bushes. Might be really blind. I can't see him anywhere. Oh no, fence, fence, fence. Ah. This way. Less traffic, and I can stick to the middle of the road. I really am starting to think the uh, header might be too big. <laughs> Again, we're only going to know once we uh, actually try it out. Let's get those off. going to be the test. Can we get through this gap here? I'm going to say close. Yep, we're through. I don't know, it's not too bad. I mean, it probably is a little bit large, maybe, for this. How many rows is it? Twelve rows, isn't it? No. Oh, there we go. Move the ladder out of the way. Now we're good to go. Oh, it's running it all right. Something else we don't own that we leased last time we had to do it was a plough. We don't own a plough or cultivator. So that's going to be another purchase at some point. Ah, we are now collecting corn from Robsfield. That's always very satisfying, isn't it? And the auger rotating the top. Product coming out means you've done something right. Yield should be pretty good on this. I mean, to be fair, no, no, it's Rob's. I mean, we'll see see what we end up with because I suppose we could sell some of this. We really need a pig, pig food mixer. From certain places, pig food's not too expensive to buy, but others it is. over half full already we haven't even done a full circuit not bad not bad at all we're looking inside
gone quiet again. I'm concentrating on the left side. <laughs> That's something else we need to add into the game. <laughs> Cab corn. You need to be able to overfill so you can get corn on the roof of the cab. That needs to be a thing, doesn't it? So get the trailer, first full load. My protector is right in the way.
And just like that, we are done. The head will need to go back. Turn it off. Fold that up. So, Film 78 is cleared. As I said before, the sprayer system that we've got, we have now run out of spray and storage. Now, I can keep buying spray, but it's expensive. Um, so, in the next episode, we're going to be buying something because this field is going to need fertilising. Plus, this field also needs ploughing. If we go across to here, you can see field 79 soil composition needs ploughing um, and we are still in that position where if I take that state off everything needs lime we haven't limed a single field yet so I'm thinking potentially to improve yield a little bit more we might well lime before the next planting as well um, so from here we're going to be going to um, field 32 field 33 field 15 our soybean fields they need to be cleared and you may have already seen when I just clicked on here. We have as a farm taken on a harvesting contract on field 12 for Robert Arkin. Um, that's for wheat. And another reason for doing these every now and again is the whatever we've got left over when the contract is complete, we can bring back and we can feed to the pigs. Because if we go across and we look at our animals, we're fine for corn at the moment. And we've just done corn because that's the majority of what they eat. Um, but we are now on to the orange for wheat, barley, soybean, potatoes and sugar beet. Now potatoes and sugar beet, we've got some in storage. Do we put some in storage or we use it all? We might have used it all actually. Um, oh, that's annoying. Oh, it doesn't matter. So if I do that contract for wheat, the by whatever's left over will cover the wheat part of that or at least a big chunk of it. Now as you can see as well, we're up to 10 animals of each now. I think we only started off with five five or six of each so they're breeding really well um the sheep we've got a load of wool pallets to move now the six wool pallets i think we've got to move so we need to load those up and move them so in the next episode we'll probably do that too um so yeah i mean everything's moving on as it should be i think what i might do is oh, we'll just back up while i'm doing it we'll back up rather than bring the tractor to us as soon as i'm in this already we'll unload into that and i think we're up to about with this, what are we looking at? 27, 28, maybe nearly 30,000 litres. That trailer's probably not far off full. Um, I am going to put all of this into storage for the pigs, regardless. We're going to fill up what they need, and then the rest of it will go into the silo at Rob's pig farm, which is literally just there. Because um, it would be churlish to sell it all, or feed them, then sell the rest, and then within two, three days need more. Um, and like I said before, I realise pigs aren't the, the, the you know the most profitable. They don't, you know, I could be selling this and making way more than I will do selling the pigs. But the thing is, as well, it's not my farm. I'm working here. I'm helping them out. Um, this pig farm is Rob's farm. Again, not my concern. I'm just here to help out and do what they need to. Um, so this header will go back. I'm going to go over and start the soybean fields. Um, I think we're probably there. Yeah, 29,049. That's not bad off this field. I'm just thinking. Um, so now we've just done corn in it. It will need ploughing anyway, because after corn it needs to be ploughed. Um, it will need to be fertilised. And I am, like I say, I'm considering liming. Um, again, I'll speak to Mick and Stuart and see what they want to do. Because if we can improve yield each time as well, do it on the soybean fields too. But it will mean leasing a some kind of machinery to spread the lime um, and also bind the lime to do it so it's a bit of a trade-off I suppose uh, when you look at it if we were doing solid fertilizer I could buy a machine that spreads fertilizer and lime that way we're kind of offsetting the cost of both but at the moment I don't know really but again it's not my decision to make I just work here which is all good so with that we have come to the end of another episode more money chips off which is great we, we've we've actually cleared them over a million off the debt it was one million seven hundred fifty thousand initially and we're down to six hundred forty thousand left on that debt so we've paid a million off already which is pretty good going when you consider it we've done a few big old jobs and made a decent bit of money uh we haven't even touched forestry yet which i think we're going to aim at doing at some point if we can get a license of course but we'll see how we go with that well that took a big chunk of it so uh yeah anyway hope you've enjoyed it i hope you're still enjoying it if you are if you have give us a like if you don't subscribe yet please do 
If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.